can they just do certain things to them all they want to do is you know eat a little of this suck a little that and it's like bruh I, I I I just I just work at radio promo and there was really no recourse that could happen because somebody and particularly there was always another woman at within that community within the label structure who would tell you oh it doesn't matter oh he's just a creep oh he's just like that <laughs> Hey guys, it's Julesy and we are back. You know, the once a month special. You can always thank, as you know, if you're true to this, or even if you're new here, let me put you on because this month, once a month special is brought to you by Audible. And if you can't tell or you can't hear, I have been sick. I don't know why in May I'm still dealing with allergies, but here we are. It's 80 degrees outside and my sinuses are literally, but I was about to say they have a chokehold on me, but no, they literally are trying to choke me out. <laughs> but y'all gotta thank y'all girl Audible for having me sit down and do this video, audible.com slash Julesy or text Julesy to 500-500 and get your first month free on Audible. As you know, I run the SBG Book Club. We have a fundraiser going on so we can keep the work going check out down below but part of my ability to run the book club to do all the things that I do to still come and sit down and do these videos for you is because I love the audiobooks available on audible and this month in the book club we are reading with the fire on high and I am so enjoying the audiobook it is really really good I can't believe how much like I play it while I'm driving and doing errands and how much of the book I've gotten through Oh, I'm really, really enjoying it. Audible has a ton of audiobooks, a ton of classics, a ton of originals, original podcasts, original audio series. Get on it again, audible.com slash Julesy or text Julesy, that's J-O-U-E-L-Z-Y, to 500-500 for your first month free. Now let's get into it. Okay, so the baby has seemingly had quite a bit of a downfall in the past mm, two years since the pandemic has started and he's just been tripping over himself in drama. Now, one of the biggest points of drama for him have been his personal life and the women in which he is engaging with and the mother of his children. And specifically what I wanted to talk about today was the baby and is it Danny Lee or Danny Lay? Look, I got the girl blocked on Spotify. We just gonna start off right there. So if I don't pronounce the name incorrectly, you know. Okay. <laughs> We'll just make it simple and keep it down to Danny and the baby. But I wanted to talk about Danny and the baby because I had did a video when it popped off about their fight and him kicking her out the house after she had his child and all that drama that spilled over and was very prominently featured on the shade room. I did a video on my Patreon. Uh, what was that? December of last year. I previously did a video on my Patreon about that big fallout and my thoughts on their relationship. And one of the points that I wanted to bring in to a YouTube video was about how Danny in particular reminds me of women in the music industry. And I'm not talking women as entertainers. You know, I previously did my video on colorism and R&B, talking about some of the artist experience, but I'm talking about the women that are behind the scenes, the women that work at the record labels, the women that are in part of the operations, the marketing, the A&R, the structure of the music industry, not the entertainer or artist themselves. Danny so much reminds me of the women in the urban music industry and particularly why something like the Me Too movement, right, never really hit the urban music scene because, well, patriarchy has no gender, but there are plenty of women in the industry who uphold the patriarchy, the misogyny, and protect very toxic men in the process as a means for them not only to survive, but for them to ascend within the industry. And I wanted to get into that here in this video. Okay, so why why even did I think of the baby and Danny as this point about the inside of the industry. The thing that stands out to me about their relationship is the timetable in which they met. 
And that DeBaby has always had a very publicly kind of violent persona that has preceded him, especially at the point when Danny and DeBaby connected. Now, I'm not going to harp too much on the baby's history with shooting people or being aggressive with people at his concerts. I want to more so focus on his relationships with the mother of his children. Okay, so they had their big fallout previously, but Danny has resurfaced recently sitting down with Angie Martinez. It does feel like she is now gearing up for some sort of promo tour music is releasing or I don't know again musically this girl was never my cup of tea to begin with and after she did that yellow bone song I can't get down with a colorist at all so she is officially blocked on my Spotify but she's been on this sort of promo tour she's been her pictures and um the shade room has been discussing her more it does feel like her team is paying for her to be featured on the shade room and again, it feels like promo is currently happening. So particularly to the Angie Martinez interview, which she offers an apology for the colorist song she did. And then she also speaks on her relationship with the baby. And there's a few statements that really stood out to me that correlate to how the music industry works and how there are black women and women of color within the industry who make these decisions to partner with men who have shown their toxic hand, have shown their misogyny, and to use these men and protect these men as a means for them to gain or climb the career ladder. Now for Danny in particular, I think it just, it went completely wrong. One, who could predict that the pandemic is gonna happen? You are deciding to mess with someone who is very clearly on the rise to mega pop stardom. You know, the baby's fall from grace is pretty significant fall from where he was at the beginning of 2020 to where he is now in 2022. And she probably thought she was going to ride that wave. Nobody thought we were going to have a global shutdown. Nobody thought that music artists and particularly, yeah, Hollywood and the music industry, the entertainers of the world lost a lot of money when they had the inability to show up and do live performances, live appearances. Hey, we got to talk about the way the record deals really work. That took a significant chunk of money from a lot of entertainers. And someone like a Danny Lay or Lee, who also at that time was really more known as a choreographer. She only had like maybe one successful single and some mildly well-performing songs to come out after that. A lot of her career was going to sustain itself off of the ability for people to gather, whether it's for her to choreograph music videos, her to choreograph live performances, her to do couple performances, her to do live events. That's how she was making, so I know she took a big hit during the pandemic. Um, and the baby not only took a big hit because of the pandemic, but he took a big hit because of his own, mm, his own bigotry, essentially. His own inability to shut up, to not talk politics. And the baby essentially lost money not only because of the pandemic, but also because of his own ego and just sounding off on things that he should not be sounding off on and not knowing how to walk it back or how to apologize. And I think even that plays into the, the myth mythos of black men within the music industry and how the few of them who have been called out for bad behavior, who have been approached for sexual assault or rape allegations, how they have typically just doubled down and moved on until it was yesterday's news because everyone just falls into this belief that people have short-term memories and the news moves fast. All right, so to begin, first we have to look at Danny Lee and the baby's relationship. Now, in her interview with Angie Martinez, Danny says that her and the baby started dating in September of 2019. Now, I think what is more an accurate presentation is that's about when they met each other because they collaborated on the baby's single box. I did it legitly. I'm still with the shits. I'm a hot nigga. Hot. Oh, you asking for She choreographed 
the little bit of dancing that's in that video to begin with like okay girl but let me not shade it too much whatever so Danny choreographed the baby single bop that came out in November of 2019 they then went on to collaborate with each other on her single Levi High that came out at the beginning of 2020 now the timeline is important because Mimi the ch mother of his first child also published an interview talking about her relationship with the baby in November of 2019 or actually October of 2019 she does this interview where she talks about the fact that they're not actually in a boyfriend girlfriend relationship but they still you know kicking it with each other like they not separate but they not together the status of our relationship hmm. we single but that's my voodoo so we single but that's my boo regardless of what essentially whatever her policies they got going on um but like publicly declaring who she was in the baby's life now what's also important about Mimi is Mimi has an older son I believe his name is Caleb and Caleb is signed to the baby's music label what's up it's Caleb let's go Xbox One yeah I'm turned up I'm playing go. my baby sister crying these other kids be lying I'm back to go to school my mom so the idea that Mimi is never going to be present in the baby's official affairs, mm, I don't know. You know, I currently live in Charlotte, North Carolina, where the baby is from. And it really isn't that hard to find out how deeply interconnected him and Mimi really are. And just to get a sense of why that is someone who is likely to never not be in his life in a way that is just, I don't know that they'll always be intimate. I don't know that she won't ever cut this man off as a partner to her, but I think that it just shouldn't be that easy for Mr. Jonathan Kirk to explain the mother of his first child away and if you have some sense about you, mm, I don't know. I don't know. Now, maybe Danny and the baby did have like a whirlwind love story. I don't know. But if <sighs> it's hard for me to give her a lot of grace in what she did or did not know about this man when they met because he is a public figure. And a lot of this is public information. And if you know he is already a person that has a sort of aggressive personality and he, he's very, he's been very vocal about his whole activity and how he views women and how he views the mother of his children. Why do you believe that you can go in and be the special one? My take is that Danny had to understand the risk she took in partnering intimately with the baby. But on some level, she also had to be aware that these risks were outweighed by the benefits if you think of where his trajectory was at the beginning of 2020. He was on the remix for Dua Lipa's Levitating. He was doing a bunch of songs with Meg Thee Stallion at this point. He was very busy. He was putting out singles. They were always traveling. And even in the interview with Angie Martinez, she talks about how the relationship was fun because they were always busy. Like they were always on the go. Like we were in love, like that honeymoon phase. Like, you know, it was really good. We both were kind of at our peak of our careers too, like. And it is fun to date someone at the beginning who is becoming a rising star, who's getting access to all these rooms. And if you see your attachment to him as beneficial to your, your career. Now we have to remember. That Prince wants me to submit a video, a choreography video. He loved the submission. And then from there, he asked me to write a treatment for the video. Danny is not just a singer. She also has in interviews talked about being discovered by Prince, being featured in Prince's music videos, being a choreographer. So she does have some skill set that she can also use behind the scenes and the possibilities if 
the baby has stayed on that trajectory and they had stayed together were probably felt very infinite for her. And this mirrors what I have experienced when I worked in the music industry. It was a large reason why I ended up leaving the music industry altogether. The music industry and the, particularly the urban music industry is very unsupportive of black women. And there are a lot of ways in which black women and women of color participate in the sort of violence and the trauma and the harm that these, by keeping men safe, who engage in misogynistic and patriarchal behavior. Now, one thing that, before we even get to like this high level stuff, I can just talk about, I formerly worked with a, a rapper and we were, he wasn't even signed at this point. We were going around to the different labels. We were having meetings with people like Todd Moskowitz and like Sylvia Rohn at Universal whatever. I personally did not want him to sign at this point because I was, I had left, um, UMPG, Universal Music Publishing Group, and I understood, like, how singles and 360 deals were working at that point. This is, like, 2011, 2012, and I just, I didn't really see the benefit with signing so early on after one hit single, but whatever. We was taking these meetings, and I, I think maybe people could, when we were in these meetings, the label people could understand that I wasn't really for, signing at this point and so maybe some of this was also a response to the way I present it but the the rapper that I was working with was also sleeping with a woman who worked at Atlantic Records now this woman did not work in any department that would handle the signing or marketing so much of an artist but for whatever reason she sat in on a meeting with us and proceeded mind, mind you the woman was not black she proceeded to ask, is your hair dry? I have some pink lotion in my office. Miss Mamas, you be fucking all your orders. Oh, why you to talk to me like that? I just had to eat it. I couldn't say anything because we were in, like, in a meeting. And, you know, I could be a hard ass about what a deal has to offer, what's the potential of a deal, but I can't be catty with this, with this woman at the office because, like... Whatever, you know, this is before we all had the language about microaggressions and passive aggressiveness. So I had to eat it. But even when I think about my time working on the record label side, besides the, I, the time I spent working with the artist, when I was at a label, there are so many wild experiences my homegirls had of, you know, men cornering them in situations asking very pejorative questions about can they just do certain things to them all they want to do is you know eat a little of this suck a little that and it's like bruh I, I I I just I just work in radio promo and I was just bringing something to you because I was sent here by your what is this and there was really no recourse that could happen because somebody, and particularly there was always another woman at within that community, within the label structure, who would tell you, oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, he's just a creep. Oh, he's just like that. And there are plenty of women who subversively use their ability to partner with men in the industry and partner with men who have these track records of at minimum being jerks, but very often being violent in some way, shape, or form, men, and just saying, oh, it doesn't really matter. Oh, that girl is just da 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 And at the period when I worked in the music industry, it could literally cost you your career as a woman to speak out about any sort of trauma or violence that was happening to you on the label side. I, at some point in my career, it wasn't like I had a brand because I also was good at what I did, but it was kind of understood that I wasn't with the shits. <laughs> and I don't, I, it wasn't like a, a good thing for that to be understood because I wasn't high enough in the totem pole for people to be like, oh, she's not with the shits, but you know, she can get you this, right? I wasn't high enough in the totem pole for that understanding of me to be to my benefit. It was often used as a way to dismiss me because, oh, Jay's not down for the boys talk. Oh, Jay isn't going to be okay with what we're discussing right now. And unfortunately, 
you know, nepotism and the boys club and who you can go down to the strip club and smoke cigars with was the way that a lot of people navigated the music industry. And so if the men have these moments outside of the corporate structure where they're able to climb the corporate ladder through who they know and who they close with, women also had to find their in. Now, there are accusations where some women will get accused of doing sexual acts in exchange, but that could also negatively follow you. And so what women would do instead, which puts them in the role of protector, is just flat out date. Date the men in power. It's why someone like currently, like a Russell Simmons, who had to flee to another country because of the allegations, will always have a woman around him. There will all, and it's not even just young women. There are handlers and protectors within his sphere of influence that are black women in the music industry, in the entertainment industry, that are there to protect him. It is why we might have these standout cases that took forever, even though we visually saw it, like a R. Kelly, to finally have their day, to finally come to the public attention, for us to finally have to reckon with their violent behavior. But he's not the only one. And largely no one else has to answer for what they've done. And I think Danny decided to date the baby. Even though at that point, we know he has a, a mother of his child who he's still messing with. We know he likes his whole activity. And we know he's also a very aggressive person. Now, when things downturn, I question why at that point did you not make a break? And I think part of how the pandemic negatively impacted both of their financial stability also made it difficult for Danny to leave the lifestyle that was provided via her access to the baby. Now, I don't necessarily want to frame this as though she is not a victim because it's very clear that the baby abused her. It's very clear that he is a violent person. And now I do have him also blocked on Spotify. It's very clear that he's a misogynist and he's egotistical and he does not respect other people. This is not to absolve the baby of the way he has harmed Danny, but also as she now goes on this apology tour to try to clean up how stupid she looked doing that yellow bone song that was a direct dig at Mimi, his first, the first mother of his child. Seti. I just want to say to everybody that I'm super sorry because mm -hmm. I it just was a mistake I I'm a Dominican woman I have family members that are dark-skinned my daughter's a black girl like it just was to even speak on skin tone like I realize how like messed up that is now what we should be doing, I want us to just consider how we accept and are we really the people that need to be accepting any sort of apology? That Yellow Bone song was specifically about another woman. And unfortunately, with the baby in his trifecta, the only innocent person in this situation is the mother of his second child, who largely lays low. She's not all over the internet, but everyone else has gotten their hands very muddied and very dirty by just being very toxic people to one another. Now, at the top of the sphere is very much so the baby. But this is sort of the similar infighting that also happens within the music industry. And I think the larger point that I do want to make is it's this is also why there's so few black women fairly represented at the executive level in the music industry. And if you look at like any sort of gathering or meeting or like award ceremony, I don't know what's like what even is essence, dinner or whatever, or they've done uh what is Diddy's company does the, the conference down in Miami every year. They typically have some of the black women music executives come. It is the same women who have been in the industry for decades that are finally ascending to executive roles. The music industry takes such a big sacrifice from black women in particular in order to ascend. And I just wasn't willing in my, once I hit 24, 
I just wasn't willing to sacrifice that much of my life to possibly in my late 30s finally being ascend ascending to like some financial stability that could literally be taken from underneath me. And I think the sort of way the industry is shaped really does encourage women to make the sacrifice, the strategic sacrifice to protect men who, who perform bad behavior in order for them to ascend the corporate ladder. Now, I'm not accusing any specific woman currently in the music industry of being that person, but my larger point is that a lot of the women who are doing really well are women who have been doing really well and sacrificed a lot for decades. And I actually don't think that the women who do a lot of the dating and do this sort of bad behavior really self-sustain. I think it eats them up inside. They become very miserable, bitter people. <laughs> Maybe some of them still do okay in the industry. I'm thinking of one person in particular, but a, a lot of these women find other ways out and they realize they have to atone for the things that they've done and the men that they've protected and the women that they've harmed in that pathway because there's no way that that really leads you to like sincere success. But a lot of the women currently in the industry are just women who had to work really, really long to finally get this modicum of success. And I think it takes a big sacrifice. And unfortunately, that sacrifice is fueled by how other women in the industry will protect men's bad behavior. And Danny's choice to not only date the baby, but maintain a relationship with him, then have a child with him. And I mean, sure. I don't think the child was necessarily as calculated, but I do, um, it just comes down to people will, this man makes a lot of money. Will he continue to make a lot of money? We'll see. We shall see. I think he might be going the route of a boosie, but who knows? But having, I don't know that she thought that she was going to get put in the line of fire the way other women in his life have. And maybe she thought that her own celebrity, her own status in the industry would provide her some shielding, which is why she went ahead and had a child with this man. Uh, you know, we can acknowledge what religious beliefs are. We can acknowledge what cultural beliefs are. But also, he's very wealthy, very visible, has a lot of means and access. Man, and I think it would be quite different if he didn't have status, if he didn't have funds, if he didn't have money. And for her to just now saying, oh, I finally got my own home when that whole fallout happened at the end of last year... And now she's just getting home in May of 2022. I'm home. Look at my kitchen. Look at my living room. Ooh. I finally have a house, guys. Sort of signals that there was some disconnect in her financial stability that was very likely caused by the pandemic and her put her in a position where she was going to rely on the baby because that was I don't even know if that was her best option but it was the most wealthy option you know and a lot of folks will do that because you think you can just use this man even though he has shown his hand to be toxic to be violent to be who he is, you still believe that there is some means and some access that you can procure from staying close to him. And when it comes to her apologizing for Yellowbone, unfortunately, as I was saying, everyone in the circle is toxic, but the person who would have to forgive her is Mimi. I don't actually think it's up to us to forgive her for her colorism. I'm sure some people will if she makes a, a decent enough bop. I mean, Sweetie is doing stellar. Music is horrible. So it's really not that hard for D Danny to create a half decent song and maybe get some traction with it. But it would really be up to the woman who you were calling out in that song, to the woman you were being colorist to. I don't necessarily think that Mimi is any better than... <laughs> Danny, per se, everyone in this situation is sort of maintaining an attachment to a man who has power, and they want to maintain that attachment to power. And 
Then he even acknowledges in the Angie Martinez interview that had that fallout not been on live, she likely would have stayed with the baby. And I don't, I don't, I just don't think you can color that as simply love. That's not love. That's not intimate love. That's not love that's built off compassion and respect and mutuality and reciprocity. That is a love of access and power and means. You cannot convince me that a broke nigga would have this sort of chokehold on two women that had something going for themselves if he didn't have access, means, and power. And that is why... Men in the music industry, men on the executive level, when we even look, there was an HBO documentary, Drew Dixon has a documentary where she details the sexual assault she faced from L.A. Reid. These men will never account for it because other women in the industry will come do their dirty work, will come protect them, will come shield them because their ability to be in these men's social circles means that they also then have access to means and power, supposedly. But I think a lot of women who participate in this sort of bad behavior, like Danny, they might not, like they're obviously not having their, their abuse broadcasted on Instagram Live, but they are having a very negative fallout that forces them to reckon with the decisions that they've made. And it very rarely leads to success in the music industry. And it does become this industry that's built on who can just kind of keep their head down, stay out of all the drama, and sacrifice long enough till they get to a position that's paying them. I was in the industry from like 2006 to 2012, so only like six years, right? But every December, entire departments would just get shut down. And it wasn't the pop departments, it wasn't the rock departments, it was always the urban departments. And with streaming now being more understood and digital media being more understood. I mean, things are still very volatile. I don't know if that end of the year dropping entire, firing entire departments of people. I mean, we look at the lifestyle companies, they laying everybody off, look at Netflix. So I can't imagine that Sony and Warner and Universal aren't participating in the same sort of carelessness with their workers that they were when I was in the industry. But it really is who could kind of weather these storms and be able to hop from label to label and keep their means. And honestly, again, if you go back and look at like women that currently are doing really well in the industry, I don't want to name names because I've been talking negatively about Danny. But there are women that I was working side by side with, right? And they started when they were young as well. I'm not trying to deter women from considering jobs in the music industry, but I just want women, especially as like these conferences and this black woman sort of pride and really promoting the image of black women has become valuable. It has a social currency behind it. So now it behooves the, the industry, it behooves the record labels and publishing houses to promote the women that work for them. I also want you to consider the pathway that they had to take and the women who are, are being bigged up. Lot, some of these women, I mean, my old boss is now like the president of Motown Records, Universal Music Publishing Group, and another company. And she started at LaFace Records at 19. She's definitely in her 40s now. It's a reason why Sylvia Rohn is still a label executive. Like, it's, it's dog eat dog, and it is very difficult. I do think the digital landscape has broadened the ability for women to get in the music industry, but it's very, very difficult. And I think that Danny's relationship with the baby and now the promo tour that she's going on and the way she's pursued this relationship is sort of a very high level example of how women engage with men in the industry. All right, I hope I made sense. I hope that wasn't all over the place. It's late. I might re-record re this in the morning, but we'll see. Talk to you later. Deuces!